All right, my friends. All right, I was just doing a preliminary sound check before getting somewhat underway. Let me turn off that background music. All right, I'm going to apologize right now for any uh, gaffes that may I may run across here. We're just going to keep pressing on with it here. Give me one sec. Uh, because it is what it is. I'm experiencing some minor 
minor difficulties, tech diffs, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. We're going to press on anyway. Good afternoon, everybody. It is afternoon where I'm at. And I hope everything's good with you. Everything's good with me. This is a second segment here about resetting the carom board, I guess. Those of you who probably grew up like me used to play caroms at one time. And that kind of inspired my title of the show today. Um, just, just to kind of give you some uh, <clears throat> heads up, and I see a comment here. Let me check out the comment here real quick. Peace and love, uh, brother. Peace and love to you. And uh, this prompted me to make an announcement. I will be making that momentarily. I just want to um, lay out some general housekeeping here. I just want to touch on some things from my perspective as learning um, increasingly coming into learning about more science, my experience with it, which is what I believe to be a social science of sorts that's uh, also affiliated with a movement. It's been categorized by some as a movement. And <clears throat> as is known in society today, there are a number of groups that consider themselves movements that... Um, you know, membership comprised is comprised of melanated people, Asiatic people, black people, towards empowerment and the betterment of the whole, the betterment of the collective group. However, there's conflict along the way. You're always going to get that. You're going to have divisive divisiveness in any social group. That's just how it is. It's been like that throughout the span of time. As a matter of fact, even with the uh, Moore Science Temple of America, there's been controversy that I've come to know about in, um, I would say, more recently, recent years comparatively. Uh, just to give you some background, I'm in my mid-50s now, so I'm beginning to feel that I'm, I'm a bit somewhat aged to be a part of the fight and be on the front line anymore. Um, you know, I've been receiving paperwork and stuff like, like that, um, marketing material you know, <laughs> with the word senior on it. <laughs> I've never really envisioned myself as a senior until you start getting AR AARP uh, stuff in the mail. <laughs> but, but anyway, it just is what it is. And as I'm trying to rearrange the screen here, I'm trying to get keep this entertaining. As you can see, the icon on the top right portion of the screen, I am not paying for StreamYard right now. So this is the unpaid account, which is the reason why I'm keeping things to within an hour's time to try to, one, capture your interest and keep it, and two, well, I'm not in for the marathon sessions anymore of just babble and talking about nothing, believe it or not. Anyway, what I want to talk about, first of all, I want to wish everyone peace, enlightenment, and power through these times that are so challenging. And I want to give uh, honors to the Most High, a man recognized as a prophet in Noble Drew Ali. And if I've done that right, please let me know. <laughs> I'm just getting familiar with the, a lot of the verbiage, uh, and I only speak, happen to speak one language and part of another. And I'm about to accept speaking a third language, but uh, that's a part of the course of study that I've embarked in over the past couple of years. I want to send a shout out. And a birthday note to a friend of mine, and they know who they are. I don't know if they wanted uh, to be publicly identified, <laughs> but uh, happy birthday to you! Enjoy your day, and hopefully, uh, you know more more years to come. All right, all right. So I've been through going through a process of self assessment, self sorting, sorting things out, sifting what. Uh, I have come to consider is inflammatory rhetoric and not inflammatory rhetoric, right? And <clears throat> in so doing, um, it's still been a struggle because, you know, being someone that is well-informed, as I like to think I am, I've managed to get both sides of pretty much everything, um, you know, within a given subject matter. As especially as it you know it might affect me and has affected me, because right now I function in a, in a certain manner which I always thought was adequate, and have found out that it's not. And it it takes a lot of effort to essentially undo 
what has been done and what I previously believed. As I also, too, have to undo, unravel, uh, circumvent, alleviate, get rid of uh, multi-generational damage and conditioning. I hesitate to actually go through my personal history because, for one, um, <laughs> I don't really feel that I want to be that transparent. At some time, I might be. I have been before. But, you know, I had meager surroundings growing up, didn't have a lot to really uh, look forward to other than hoping, other than dreaming, other than leaving and being away from the circumstances that I faced growing up. Things could have been a lot worse than, you know, than the route that I ended up taking. But I did have my eyes open to some extent, and I went with what I believed was the course to assume in life. Growing up where I did in Southern California, greater Los Angeles area. There wasn't really much of an outlet <clears throat> in terms of understanding and coming to a comprehensive full range understanding of more science and what it, what it is. See, I grew up around the era when, well, I grew up when the Black Panther Party that had its offices in South Central Los Angeles, of which I'm a native of, they call it South Central Los Angeles, South Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Greater Los Angeles, what have you. South of the Santa Monica Freeway, east of the, the 405, and, well, for some period of time, east of the Harbor Freeway. Okay, the east side, low bottoms, over to the west side. Okay? So that's kind of a thumbnail depiction of my background history. Right? Had a lot of influences, had a lot of, I've witnessed a lot of adverse situations, a lot of bad circumstances, but... I made it through. I made it through to what I thought, or what I thought, 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 <laughs> was the way to achieve, the way to livelihood with what was afforded to me at the time. So, in, you know, in so doing, and I didn't realize this till much later, that I was, I fell under that black, black power paradigm. And I, I talked about the Black Panther uh, Party was neutralized, I believe, in 19, uh, what was it, 1970, where the central Los Angeles office was, uh, was attacked and successfully neutralized. That was the inception of uh, the SWAT. SWAT. The SWAT that was the first time that a, a SWAT team was devised and formed, Special Weapons and Tactics Team. That was it. The SWAT that we come to know today, the television program with um, Shamar Moore, the inception of it actually began at that location on 41st and Central. Well, I used to watch the TV show when I was a kid, too, the uh, 70s television show. Used to actually like it. But all this had little to do with my own consciousness. I was raised with a certain set of values. I was raised to excel wherever I could and to take advantage opportunities that were afforded to me at the time. I almost wound up being uh, sent to school, aboard a, a school bus to an hour and a half away, but instead we moved out towards that direction. Not necessarily to say there were better schools, but at least I had a book that I didn't have to share with somebody else. And I fell into the category, the stigma of, well, I was raised with a single parent. No father present. So I essentially had to uh, build myself, become a man of my own self, drawing influences by proxy. A lot of it was perpetuated by television. I won't say a lot of it. But I grew up with a male presence around. I grew up with three uncles who are no longer with us. They all would lose their life and transcend in their own ways. However, it was all the same because they lost their lives to the street. You would think that was enough inspiration, enough motivation for me. And it was to some extent. 
but I just didn't go far enough. I just didn't push hard enough. See, my, my, I thought that moving to the suburbs or moving to like a, <laughs> I tend to say this and, and I might even say this again, quote unquote, vanilla suburb made popular by George Clinton, Parliament Fun Funkadelic songs, I guess. I thought that was the way out. I thought that was the way to assure a future for myself. Come to find out, not necessarily. Because there was something missing. There was something missing. A full comprisement, if you will, of my own consciousness of really who I was, naturally. 1977, the uh, motion picture Roots came out somewhere around that time period. And my mother, <clears throat> she had the foresight to actually, uh, because of that motion picture, she actually, uh, the miniseries rather, she actually uh, was able to um, put together our Roots at least through the information that she was, she had access to at the time because she worked for a uh, public service organization, clerical work, and was able to have access to information, which I still have to this day. She actually prepared it in early, well, a couple of years after the motion pictures, after the movies or whatever, and after the book. She bought the book, I believe read it. I read it as a kid, I think. Anyway, there was around the time in Southern California, my growing up, there was emphasis on, on black empowerment. It was about black power. Black power, burn, baby, burn, that type of thing, right? On the heels of the 1965 Watts Rebellion. I had family members present when that happened. I was born about it well, roughly a year after that. I was supposed to be the hope and promise of the family, of at least from what I knew of my paternal side of my family that, who supported me. Never got to know my father. Never got to know my father's side until the advent of uh, technology. I was able to learn more information into that and actually trace my roots further than my maternal side. That's neither here nor there. So through this self-assessment, and sorting of myself, coming into being and learning of my consciousness. Here I am. After working a career, what was considered a noble career at the time, it isn't now because everyone's trying to defund it. I'm not ashamed to say, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of a career choice I made in my 20s. I'm not ashamed of having to have served in the military and Disclosure, I didn't necessarily join the military because I felt astoundingly patriotic. I joined the service to get away from the house, to get out of the house, because either that or I was going to be working somewhere, slinging burgers, and being on the streets, trying to go to junior college, getting drawn in to less than favorable influences and such. So anyway, <clears throat> with uh, some guidance, what I thought was right, what I thought was the way to go about experiencing all there was in life for me, I went a particular route. I thought I can change things from within. I ended up joining the ranks of law enforcement. But the department I ended, the agency I ended up working for, the department I ended up working for, wasn't my first choice. Within about a five-year period, I applied for roughly a dozen different agencies throughout the Southern California area. I even applied for um, Las Vegas Metropolitan P PD, San Bernardino, different law enforcement agencies, and I actually am glad I didn't end up working for. Whether or not I was a token, okay but I was using it for what I thought would be an advantage in my life. I thought I would be able to learn from the inside out because my first job that I applied for was to be a uh, marshal 
a court martial or a marshal with the Los Angeles, uh, with Los Angeles County. That agency got dissolved in 1990 and got absorbed by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, which I actually didn't want to work for. My whole idea was to work inside the system. And I wanted to work inside of the court system because I was going to pursue law at the urging of my mother. But I got I got distracted just like much of anything else. I mean, with even right now, there's so much on my mind. And I'm not saying it's easy for me to get distracted. But I do understand now more than ever that it's the very system itself, the establishment itself, is in position to distract you. It's in position to keep you subservient to it, to keep you as a subject. I didn't come to understand that until I worked a career in the profession, experienced certain things. And I was even, well, described as having an unorthodox approach to a lot of things. Even though I went by the book, and pardon if you hear the car in the background, but 30 years ago, I used to like loud cars. Now, I don't really care for them, not so much. It's like everybody's a race car driver without the training. Okay, so anywho, hopefully that's not too much of a distraction. I'll go ahead and turn the gain knob down. Gain, 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 gain. Hopefully you won't hear that noise. So it's, it's ongoing assessment that one has to have in order to understand their position in life, being able to control what it is that they, control, they can control. And everything that's outside of their control, you just kind of let it go, I guess, right? At least that's my thought. So I'm figuring now, being of in my mid-50s, I'm probably a little bit down the road from being that fighter on the front line. To be quite honest with you, a couple years ago, I was actually going to go to Louisville, Kentucky. I was going to drive because I didn't want to fly. I didn't, I didn't want to deal with the expense of it, and I didn't want to deal with, uh, you know, if, you know, shipping my firearms or whatever over there. But anyway, I actually was. I, I, I always had believed in the betterment of our social condition. I've always believed in that because of the adversity I faced as a child, of the adversity that my my elders faced all throughout their life. Because I come from a line basically of what? Mothers that raised the children. I didn't grow up, I wasn't the only one that grew up in a single parent household. My grandmother was a single parent. My great grandmother, my maternal great grandmother was a single parent as well. So all that stuff I have to fight. I have to really work towards those things that are most reparative, not only to me as an individual, but to, you know, to the greater cause. There is a cause here, right? The betterment of our people. It's possible that I didn't know any better. Because, you know, we had it easy going up, growing up during our time. We thought that the, the quote-unquote civil rights struggle was it. We thought that that was going to take care of everything. Well, no, it didn't. Way off on that assessment. So I lost sight of myself. I've lost sight of myself and my positionality relative to how things go, how things really go. I always knew that I was, I guess you can say, subservient because everybody has a boss right when you work somewhere even if you work in the public sector you have somebody that you have to answer for you have an entity you have to answer for you have to, an establishment you have to answer for and i did that but there have been situations that told me that this wasn't fulfilling that there was more to me than just doing that job which I thought, which is somewhat of a calling because you go through so much of, you know, whatever, uh, you know, but it's neither here nor there. It's been over 10 years since I've done it. I went on to do other things. Didn't necessarily prosper from it, but 
I'm glad to be here talking to y'all today. Let's see what I touched on in the last segment. And I even f- forgot what uh, I actually closed off with 25 minutes in here now today is um, <clears throat> knowledge being weaponized. You know, that's kind of what caused me caused me to, to, to kind of back away from the table a little bit about this, you know, this whole consciousness movement is what kind of backed me away from the table is I see the knowledge being weaponized. I see certain behaviors, certain behaviors that are considered to be somewhat potentially dysfunctional, functional, dysfunctional behavior that I'm seeing among people, right? That's just what I've encountered and experienced over this time. It's been said that, you know, some people in their in their whole lifetime don't really really reach the level of, con- of consciousness that they should. It's been said that I've heard that five years or so, you know, of going to the temple or actually studying, 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 and then studying yourself again, that there's some enlightenment thereafter. I tend to buy into that somewhat. And I don't mean to convey that I look to the internet to bolster my information, to bolster my, my, um, what am I trying to say? Bolster my educational foundation in this, in this walk. It's just so easy though, because it's, you know, you have so much at your fingertips, but you have to study well into it and well beyond it. So, we have people out here in this space and I'm not naming names and I'm not attacking anybody. It's just, I'm just recounting observations because I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I guess, both sides of it. I'm seeing one side present this and the other side present that. And I don't, I don't, I don't really have any skin in the game. I haven't lost any money. I haven't lost um, 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 a dwelling. I haven't lost any, any real property. I haven't lost any purple, uh, any, any, um, personal property either. I haven't jeopardized myself. I haven't compromised myself. So I'm not, well, I, I'll digress about the uh, compromising because I've been in conversations with some groups that are considered extreme. I happen to physically be in a region not far from where there was the first black identity extremist case that took place within a short driving distance from where I'm sitting right now. And I actually reached out to them because I was going to be a staff writer or wanted to be. I actually applied to be a staff writer for their for their newspaper. I won't say, I won't identify the group, but I'm sure, you know, my ISP probably, you know, ran across the desk of somebody in NSA or whatever these agencies are, these alphabet agencies are. And it's not that I've done it intentionally. It's because I've been searching I've been seeking, I've been trying to find something that can bolster and put me on a position that's knowledgeable, that I could share the knowledge with people that I care about. I said that in the last video. My goal is to learn everything I can to be in in a position where I'm more supposed to be. And through this process, I was supposed to actually share this with other people that I care about, my loved ones. I married into a family that, um, aside from thinking that I'm actually crazy, just on GP, but they grew up, you know, they, they, they have their own belief system, right? But I'm not trying to change other people. I'm trying to share their information as I come across. And, and, you know, my spouse, my wife thinks I'm crazy. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. But I have to be able to to format a logical approach to this, a logical ex- explanation why why I am involved in it, so I could also bring them into it if they choose to do that. I see some comments up here. I see your comments. Let me see them. Okay, no problem. Yes, thank Allah for the prophet. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, you, yeah, no problem, no problem, brother. 
Yes. Yes. Happy birthday to you, man. I, I you know, I, I just wanted to be discreet about that. I didn't, you know, I don't like to really put anybody on blast. I'm trying to stay. I have a certain nomenclature that I do here. I, I don't necessarily like to shout anybody out unless they want to be shouted out. Okay. So happy birthday to you, bro. So weaponizing the knowledge is something that I'm avoiding, something that I won't do, but I'll see others do it. It's a matter of discernment for me. It's a matter of determining what is the most applicable information, what is the most feasible approach for me in this walk into Moorish consciousness. It may sound somewhat simplistic, but it's not. I've purchased a number of books courtesy of another uh, presenter who's brought them forth. And there's books that I haven't even read yet. I said, there, I said there's books by J.A. Rogers I, that just that I've started to even read and can't scan through that, that have blown my mind. They blow, they, mind-blowing books. And I feel a bit ashamed in not knowing this stuff because in high school I had a black history class. This is back around 1980s time, and the teacher was black. And I'm embarrassed to say what grade I got, but it wasn't it wasn't an A grade. But you know, I'm kind of through with being ashamed now. My intentions are honest, my intentions are true, my intentions are genuine in in my walk. Everybody has their own walk the way that they want to do it. It's been suggested, of course, you know, by some people to locate a temple. And then others will say that your body is your temple. So, and then, then just recently, as recent as a few days ago, I found out there's two, there's two temple number ones. That's my understanding. There's two. MSTA temples in Chicago, I believe. What kind of skullduggery is that? <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm studying every day. Not that I live, breathe everything. I guess I, I'm starting to live and breathe this stuff because it's always on my mind. It's occupying my space in my brain, my mind space and everything, and my approach to living this existence, being in this existence. Yes, I understand. I'm I'm I may say I'm alive when I'm actually dead on paper or what have you. I have a birth certificate. Yes. My son just got a learner's permit. Yes. Okay. My son has a birth certificate. Yes. We have to function as best we can with what we got. Although I'm preparing my son and I'm I'm on a tirade here right now. I didn't mean to go on a tangent, but I'm preparing my son accordingly. You know, I may not be raising him. I mean, right now he's 16. And I heard it said that, you know, once they're, once they're beyond 12 years old, they're pretty much out of reach in terms of this consciousness, the aspect of this consciousness, consciousness and everything associated with it. And that's something I may, you know, I may have to personally accept that. But I've given him the books. I've given him the information. I mean, he's of the age now where he's got to make up his own mind when it comes to certain things and how he wants to live out the rest of his life. Hopefully without the knowledge being weaponized. As it has been, as it is. With the back and forth, people going back and forth. People debating, outright arguing calling each other out of their names, making comments about their physical appearances and that. I mean, I had at the very, I won't even say at the very start, but somewhere at the beginning of this, of my own walk, I had someone personally say and attack me and say that I was an agent. Say, and actually refer to me as an old ass, scary old ass. To me, that flies in the face of what we're supposed to be about. That being love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I get those parts. 
but it just doesn't seem to me that there's an equal measure of those things, those, those very pillars with some people in this space. I've had the good fortune in my life and I'm not knocking. This is not a knock. I'm talking about myself and my experiences. Okay. I've had the good fortune of not having been incarcerated for an extended period of time. I've been to jail before twice. Didn't learn the first time. It's 20 years old. I won't go into the whole story, but things could have turned out a whole lot different. It was a felony charge that I faced. I was 22 years old and I had a weapon in my car. That's the short of it. The other one was about of about of irresponsibility where I didn't pay some traffic warrant. I was in my early to mid 20s then, driving somebody else's car. The good fortune in that, since it was somebody else's car. The cop didn't tow it away. That would have compounded things even further, but I sure did go to jail. Later on in later years, when I worked at the, on the other side of the door, I'd meet some, run across some individuals during, you know, the course of my doing work. I was at a custodial facility that I used to be assigned at in a special section called special housing. I've had the occasion of uh, interacting, let's say, with lifers. Even a couple years later, I ended up working on the transportation squad, which enabled me to speak or actually enabled me to listen Listen to people that were more conscious than I was. You'll be surprised if you just close your mouth and listen to what people have to say about their experiences relative to consciousness. I cherish and value those experiences. I did and I still do today. Because there are people that are in less than favorable conditions that have nothing but time on their hands other than to read books to improve themselves. Even if they're not lifers, if they're people that are spending time, and these are people that are spending time incarcerated that have seen a better way out, seen a better way in their lives, right? It's a shame that is in some cases that has taken that, but it is what it is. And that hasn't escaped my notice. Because I, I thought it was just so so far radical to believe these things pursuant to Moorish consciousness, the Moorish community, Moorish society, being a Moorish American. And the issue of sovereignty. Now, I say sovereignty alone, in and of itself, without the word citizen attached to it because they're different things, at least the way I understand it. But this is for another show. I'm trying to reset reset my mind and reset the carom board so I can play the game successfully, putting all different things in, in, in their respective pockets depending on the angles and, and that and making sure I don't inadvertently, well, drop the black one in the pocket, right? Let's see, um, what's come to mind as I've, I've tended to get into the circle seven and I won't quote it because I'm horrible at that. Well, I still have to work with it. I won't say I'm horrible because that's, that's going to cancel myself out. But one thing striking that has to do with the circle seven and, and, and the inception, the, the, the foundation of which the prophet spoke about was being industrious and producing for the people. This is partly where I'm at now, is coming up with something to produce for the people. 
not necessarily anything that I can garner a claim from, get rich from, or anything like that. But producing for the people, being industrious. So I could achieve leverage enough to hopefully acquire land. I lost sight of that too. Because it was always about the quote unquote, the proverbial white picket fence, 1.5 dogs, and some home in the suburbs. I had that. I live in a suburb now. Only because, well, let's just face it. It was for survival. I don't make any excuses. It was for survival. And as a people at large, at large, we have definitely lost, definitely, definitely lost our way. So producing for the people, that's something that's foremost in my mind. Working for self. That's nothing I've ever really considered. I didn't really consider it. I ended up being, you know, because I was always, I was encouraged by my mother to go towards the safe thing, to go to get a job. Because anything short of that, you're leaving yourself out there. You don't have any benefits to draw on. And I'm grateful for one benefit that I'm able to draw on. Even though, you know, it affords me a little bit of, 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 uh, sustenance being in, in the rank of the retired even though i retired a bit earlier than i had anticipated but that's another story producing for the people um the vision and the role of becoming a better citizen and i'm questioning what was meant by that because some people that that have a provocative way of coming about they'll say you know, we're not citizens of this corporation. But we occupy a space and we have to function within it in the best way we know possible. That's my take on it. It's about being a better you. So you have so you can be impactful. That can, it can be beneficial towards the collective. That's the way I read into that. All right, before I go on here, I'm still going to be on here for a while. Um, let's see here. I want to make an announcement here. I'm, I'm going to see how this shows up on the screen. I want to see how if I can share this. In the... Well, it's no secret. I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I've been here over 10 years. Um, I don't do random pull-ups, by the way. I'm not concerned about anybody pulling up on me. <laughs> it is a uh, constitutional carry state. <laughs> Just saying. But I'm not in the position of some content creators here that are, you know, getting people riled up. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I just got through seeing video of a particular individual that was... Uh, yeah, things got kind of tense. Anyway, shape or form, um, I am not here to uh, make controversial statements because that would be against the principles, right? That would be against against that. So I am avoiding and I, and I am really just flying over and avoiding, you know, from making certain controversial comments. But, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis, having conversation with people, you know, I may let let F bomb fly every now and again. I might say some stuff controversial, but it's not congruent with who I really am, you know. But anyway, and I'm not looking down my nose at anybody either, but I'm just saying. Okay, the Embassy of the Moors presents the uh, State of Black America. I'm getting ready to share my screen right now. I'm going to make an announcement because it's going to be in June. I'm really excited about it, to be honest. Let me uh, share my screen there, make sure I've got some neg uh, less than favorable stuff that's not showing. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me pull this up on the screen and uh, plug this, do a little bit of a plug here, add plug. 
One second. I'll pull that up for you. It's going to be Saturday. I'm going to share the screen right about now. See how that looks. All right. Let me see how that looks to y'all. Oh, there we go. The State of Black America, Saturday, June 25th, 2022 at 3 p.m. Central Time. 3 p.m. Central Time. Double Tree uh, by Hilton, Dallas, near the Galleria Mall on 4099 Valley View Lane in Dallas. It's going to be near the um, Dallas North Dallas North uh, Tollway and 635. It's going to be near there. It's actually going to be northeast of there. It's going to be the 25th of June. And you can also join virtually. It's a virtual event also offered through Zoom. Uh, please email. You can probably see that on the screen. Let me verify that. And I'm actually going to put in a ticker here in a few minutes. Now, it's kind of hard for you all to see, isn't it? Let me see if I can blow that up. All right. The State of Black America, Saturday, June 25th. More information at the embassy, all, all one word, okay, all run together, uh, whether caps or all small letters, the embassy of the moors.org, the embassy of the moors.org for more details and uh, for about the virtual event too. You can contact eventbrite.com, eventbrite.com. Now, I'm going to read uh, some of uh, the comments here down in the caption. Now, have you ever wondered why it's so dangerous being black in America? This is a truth that must be explored, and about the event itself. Explore the untold truth of why it's so dangerous being in black America from the great history of our ancestors to how we ended up in this position of uh, systematic oppression and uh, how we will come out refined and unified. What is nationality and the benefits of our unity? Again, that's Saturday, June 25th, 3 to 7 p.m. Central Time at the uh, Hilton Dallas Doubletree. So i like to see your face in the place. Um, refund policy below. Contact the organizer. Request a refund. Event bright fees are non-refundable. All right. So check that out. I might be there. I might, you know, I might even check it out virtually. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But I'd appreciate it. If I'd appreciate your support and coming out to see uh, my man go ahead and do his oration thing and tell people what's what. All right. All right. So there you go. Now, where did I leave off? Yeah, there we go. All right. So uh, let me see. Just to give you all a heads up, I'm probably going to hang out for another 15 minutes. I'm going to decompress and resume the rest of my day. So it would occur to me, and this is what I've always maintained as I've gotten further into this, is that a diplomatic approach to this would probably be more feasible. I'm not saying anyone's done anything wrong, good, bad, or indifferent up to this point. I'm saying that there needs to be a comprehensive, a full measure, and a diplomatic approach associated with this. There needs to be international recognition that we are truly, fully a nation of people. Until that happens, and then, you know, we have these splinter organizations, until we're recognized collectively, utilizing a most diplomatic approach, in my opinion, we're still going to be stuck where we are. Everything occurring, and I'm not claiming to be a mystic or anything like that, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm not claiming to be an adept. I'm not complaining to be all knowing. But it would seem to me that such approaches need to be considered in order to be most effective in this. Take, for example, what's happening over, I used to say the Ukraine, but it's been expressed Ukraine. Because apparently, I guess they have statehood. They're not. They're not under under anybody else's thumb. Apparently, but like I said, I used to express it as the Ukraine. But take what's going on between in the conflict, the war rather between Ukraine and Russia. Regardless of what you believe, you know those are those are white people. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not. I'm not buying into that. Okay, I'm not. Just not having it. 
look at it from the aspect of 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 it being an issue of i guess not really maybe a davy davy and goliath type maybe thing or like just a group of those that are substandard or that are subjugated or or <coughs> subservient to the state that is russia because russia is trying to you know it's just a power game for resources we all know that i wish i knew this earlier but i kind of knew it i just, it just didn't get serious I wish we all knew the, and valued the importance of land acquisition to maybe not so much to that point to let things get that far to where a government that en encompasses you or envelopes you or envelopes the state where you are or envelopes the territory where you are flips a switch and decides they want to take your land. Now I'm not I'm not on the side of of one versus the other, good versus evil, or whatever. I'm on the side of the people. That was the case between um as well. I felt the same way about is Israel and uh, what is it? Israel and Palestine. When I started seeing maps and st well, I don't, who knows? I mean, a lot of the information that's out here, I'm not saying take corporate news information word for word i'm not saying that at all you have to read between the lines you have to come up with 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 a thought process in which you can really think these out think these things out think these things through for yourself one is a power structure going after one that isn't it's what it is at face value right so I would uh, I would say, and I'm not I don't put myself in a position to suggest anything to anybody. Just a person that's have have had has had lived experience. I can tell you, just it would be wise to to kind of keep an eye on that. And I really do believe that those of us of a particular age range are really seeing it are really really seeing things for what it is and are in getting in positions if they're not already or well, they're getting in positions to change it to exact reform for the betterment of our conditions and that in and of itself i mean here's a catch word coming so i'm going to warn you that in and of itself can be considered radicalist to be of a particular group that has experienced a pattern of multi-generational disenfranchisement, if you will. They've been perpetually disenfranchised at least throughout the course of my own lifetime and even further back as chronicled in history. I'm not saying his story, but I'm saying through research, it's obvious of who's been deprived and who's been extended entitlement. Even in recent history shows that. I mean, I've seen images of Ukrainians in Tijuana right now. I mean, that's not really particularly distressing to me. I knew it was going to happen. So it would be wise to kind of have a, 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 a general sense of what's going on. I mean, I'm not saying anything that flies in, in, in the face of common sense, right? A lot of stuff going on right now. I mean, we just had tornadic activity last night. And there's some lightning strikes that came super close to where I'm at. Talk about uh I won't I won't get too rash. It's still uh it's not it's still prime time right now. <laughs> I was talking about I'm gonna say something about pucker factor, but anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Better citizen uh, having a diplomatic approach event. Right. OK. In the whole course of everything, and, and I'm getting close to an hour, didn't expect to be on this long. But in the course of everything that's been affecting us, not to say that we're victims or anything of the sort, not to say that we're elitist and, elitist and better than anybody else. But what I'm saying is. Everything that we've come to know and recognize has been turned upside down and backward through contrivance, 
through things called papal bulls, through instruments to deprive an entire civilization of people throughout history. Yet we have some of us that fail to regard this history. They fail to acknowledge it. Or they feel perilous to do anything about it. You know, think about the people that are overseas or think about those that are running across these YouTubes and they're seeing the infighting. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, we should censor it. I guess we should because, you know, in the Circle 7, we're not supposed to do certain things. You're not supposed to, you know, uh, bring about controversy, right? There's a way to go about handling your business. And I'm not here to tell anybody how to handle their business. I know how I would handle mine. But we have to look at the bigger picture. We have to look at the future of our children. We have to look at the future of those who are coming into themselves that are, well, hopefully they're not going <laughs> to, hopefully there's, I mean, nowadays with the advent of technology, you know, you have a number of people that do not have to join the labor force and get a job. I mean, I'm told all the time there's ways to, of making money online. You know, you see the abs or whatever. Hopefully, the the generations that are coming behind me, not that I've that I've given up because I'm still trying to do what I can do, even though all I'm doing is lending a voice from this one platform. Well, a couple of others I want to start up as well. But if all I have is my voice right now, that can inspire, motivate, or people can learn from me. I can learn from other people as I have and will continue to learn. And hopefully it will inspire change. It will motivate people to get out here and do what we need to do or what needs to be done. So essentially, and it's going to boil down to this as the time runs out because I only wanted to go an hour. I'm on the fence about, you know, whether I should say more or speak less. I have started to speak less, to be honest. Because when you speak less, you're able to learn more. So as it stands, I'm going to be more measured in, in what I say. I'm probably not going to come on very much. You know, I'm just going to, you know, support what it is I'm trying to do here, whatever that is. But in the totality of all this, which I commonly refer to as my walk into Moorish consciousness, learning more truths, is I was afraid of learning all of this information. And I was afraid that it would be wrong. I was afraid I would be wrong in accepting certain principles applied to it. I was afraid to be wrong in being in alignment with certain things that went, that will go against my previous beliefs. I was afraid once I, you know, would get into this more, I mean, it's, it's in me, I know, but once I learn a lot of these methods, if you will, gain a lot of this knowledge and information, into being an upstanding more Moorish American, rather, Moorish American Muslim at that. And even that's controversial to some people, Muslim versus Muslim. Still got more to learn about that. But I was afraid of going down the road and getting into the mix for it to all be wrong and all be undone. And not necessarily that I care about appearances, but looking like someone that I'm not, when I just want to get back to being a natural man, naturally who we're supposed to be. I guess that's a little bit simplistic yet complicated. So there you have it. Like I said, I'm staying true to the clock right now. I'll, I'm looking at the clock in the window and I've got about 10 seconds left. 
So I'm going to mark, put a, a pin in this one because I got some other things written down. And I'll be covering that next time. So if you'll join me next time, hopefully sooner than later, um, I'm expecting to be back on next week. Probably do this once a week. Yeah, I see that. Um, are there any any questions? You know, before I leave, before I head out, I didn't want to just leave you hanging. I see, uh, you know, I got people here in, in the box. Uh, if you got any questions, um, go ahead and fire them to me. I'm gonna hang out for a minute. I got I got pretty much nothing. I'm making time. It's not well. I have the time because I'm making the time and deciding to get back into this. Um, Somebody called me from out of state. I don't even answer my phone. Anyway, um, anyone got any questions out there? I see, yeah, I see Muslim, Muslim, and, and that's something, you know, same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. You know, it's the same thing, but some people say it's different. But, you know, hey, different strokes for different folks. Any questions out there uh, for any of y'all that might be uh, viewing this? Thanks to those of you that have tuned in during the live. And to those of you who uh, happen to catch this later, I think this is a good edit. Uh, I'm going to keep this up um in uh, on the profile on the platform for uh viewing later and i've actually decided to get back into this again um because well th this is legacy for me this is I'm, I'm building a personal legacy out of this because what i intend to, to do through this is maybe someday have my son see this you know, right now he's of the age where he has his own social life. He's of the age where he has his own social life. He's a student athlete and doing really well in school. That's it. He doesn't quite have the time these days to um to really sit down and have a heart to heart about these things that I barely know how to talk about because it's so it's intrinsically there but I still have to grasp it by gaining additional information so I can speak from a platform of knowledge and just not be blowing hot air and if it sounds like I'm struggling and getting through with this it's because I am because the social conditions being what they are and all the influences and stuff that are out here through technology, outside influences that are forming his thinking and the way that he wants to lead his life are somewhat troubling to me, to be honest. Even though it's innocent, it's considered normal activity that he's associated with like he goes he goes fishing with his friends every few days for crying out loud he's been starting you know to go to a church group you know and that's his own pretty much his own decision but he's gotten some influence from some of the some of his teammates and the coaching staff we happen to live well within the throes of a, of the bible belt we're not far from tbn broadcasting networks i drove i for a time, I drove a school bus route that drove right past Benny Hinn's uh, uh, international offices, and I saw the day that it was being raided by the feds. There's a church on every corner out here. I'm not knocking church. I'm not knocking religion, but I know from the way I've learned what it is, what it is, at least for me, because I, I didn't grow up in the church. My wife did. I didn't grow up in the church. I grew up actually, um, <laughs> believe it or not, actually grew up around quasi-revolutionaries. I grew up in a time where I was actually convinced to think independently and be independent. But that's all it, that's as far as it, it went because there were detractors that got in the way of, of my elders and their path to consciousness. You know, the male role models I had in my life, even though they had, uh, you know, a large part to do with the street and the streets took them. They had their attributes. And I did what I could to utilize those. They guided me and shaped me. Told me not to be involved in certain activities and that. 
I've had to learn how to be a father, a dad, without a present one in my life. So I guess invariably, I'm trying to be a better dad for my son. And as sappy as that sounds, it is what it is. And as sentimental as I might be, and I'm using that phrase way too much because I actually called one of my shows that. I guess you can call it shows. But I'm just trying to piece together, piece this together and make my way as best I can because, you know, you reach a certain age in your life, man, and, and it's like, not to sound defeatist, but you just know that, that you're on your way out. I, heard, I once heard, I still, you know, hear this voice, in, this voice in my head. This gentleman told me one day, a former co-worker, he said to me that once you turn 50, everything starts to uh, break down. And he's, well, he said it with more blue language than that, but I don't feel the need to be uh, too profane. But I'm not saying that's true. I'm not saying that's false. But, you know, we have a certain time in the world to make things happen for the best. So if I can do my small part to help guide, you know, my boy or my young man, I don't even say my boy, but my son, who's my enlightenment to keep going. And hopefully someday he'll see this, you know, not I'm talking about in the future because, you know, I'm sure right now he'll think it's corny or not. But sometimes, sometime one day, hopefully, you know, when he has, um, you know, the time to set aside, he'll see his old man was trying to trying to do something to make a difference for the people. All right. Peace, light, power to everybody. We'll see you next time. I'm out. Maybe I'll have some background music for you next time, huh? <laughs> Peace.